Hey there friends, Sarah here with Brown Family Goods. Thanks for being here today. Today's video, I wanna share with you some outdoor projects that we've been working on. Now, let me tell you what we're going through today. It's actually September 11th and we are awaiting the arrival of Hurricane Francine here in Baton Rouge. We've done a lot of preparations, of course. We've gotten everything ready that we can. We certainly are familiar with going through hurricanes here, um, but now we just wait until she arrives. It's supposed to be in, you know, from one o'clock to five o'clock here in our area and um, we'll see what we get. That's all we can really do at this point. Maybe I'll try to give you a few glimpses outside throughout the day today as well. Right now, just some light rain and no winds yet, so it's still very still here. But I wanted to share with you about today's video sponsor as well, and that is Vijega Garden Beds. Now they sent me a beautiful raised garden bed and I'm going to share that with you exactly how we set that up and how I planted it out and all that and I'm so excited to have it. A metal raised garden bed is probably the answer here in South Louisiana if you're going to do um, raised beds. I'm really excited to see how it does and I think it's going to be just fine, just fine outside. I appreciate you being here today. Let's go ahead and just jump into today's video. <music> Thanks again to Vijega for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I was excited to plant this new raised bed with the seedlings that I started a little while ago. Vijega also has these silicone seed trays that they sent me and I'm looking forward to using those soon because I'm going to need to start some more pansies and snapdragons for my winter green stalk that I had planned. The pansies in the first round didn't really pan out at all. I think I got two pansies on my seed tray. So I'm going to try again with the silicone seed trays that Vijega has very, very soon. But anyway, back to the raised beds. Let me share a few of my favorite features with you about these metal raised beds. They are super corrosion resistant. They're going to be rust free for many years and you don't have to worry about anything leaching into your soil like you would with treated lumber or plastic planters. Another thing that I love is the height of this bed. 
it's a little easier on the back to not have to bend to ground level to work in the bed. Um, Vajega also has several sizes of beds and colors with varied heights so that you can customize and personalize the look of your garden. If you're thinking about metal raised garden beds, I would definitely encourage you to browse around their website, vjega.com. I'll leave the link in the description so you can click right over there. Anyway, there are so many options and my favorite thing is to read the reviews and look through all the pictures that people have left to see how uniquely others have set up these beautiful gardens using metal raised beds. So there's trellis systems, bed covers, and so much more. So be sure to check it out on their website, vijega.com. And if you find something you like, use my discount code to get 10% off and save yourself some money. All right, you guys, now we're moving on to project number two. Well, maybe we'll call it 2A because this is sort of a two-part project that I'm gonna show you. And it's just cleaning up the front porch first. We're gonna completely ignore the hideous bushes there for a few minutes until we get the porch cleaned off. So I started working on the porch one evening. It's not that dirty, it's just grimy, you know? We don't actually go out onto the front porch a whole lot other than to run out and check the mail and you know, get packages off the porch, things of that nature. But since we have the fenced off area for the boys, the dogs uh, in the driveway area, and we also have a fenced in backyard, we just don't tend to utilize the front porch as much. Not that it's not nice in the evenings because at least it's shady, but I'd like to take all of the little furniture off. I'm not gonna take the big wood box off because that's way too heavy for me, but I take the furniture off. I spray for wasp because there's plenty of wasp up here since we're not up in this area very often. Um, shake the rug out. I'm going to wash all this stuff down just with the hose. And then I eventually, oh, I got myself a bucket of water, maybe some Mr. Clean or something like that, just to wipe things down and wipe the furniture off, the windows and things of that nature, because gosh, it makes such a huge difference to knock some of the dirt and dust off of the windows. Um, even when you're inside, you can tell a huge difference because you don't realize how dusty those windows get on the front of the house. And it blocks the light, sadly. And I am a person who wants as much light inside the house as possible. So just give everything a quick rinse. And it does not take long to clean all this stuff. It's just a matter of doing it. Honestly, we don't jazz up the front porch too much. I change things out maybe quarterly, you know, a few times a year. I'll change things. But I'm not somebody who changes out all of the front decor um, with the seasons or anything. Maybe I used to, but I don't tend to do that anymore. But I like to freshen it up from time to time so that it's not so scary with bugs and dirt and things like that <laughs> throughout the year. I just try to, I tend to let it go for a while and then I'll get back to it because during the hot summer, this stuff up here is not getting a lot of maintenance and you can tell, you can tell. So everything's put back together there and that was my evening project for that night. Just a little quick tidy up. Maybe it's time for you to do the same to yours. So the next day, however, is when we tackled those bushes. There are azalea bushes there on the left side of the house and weeds. Well, quite frankly, we have so many weeds up front. Also, those are overgrown zinnias that reseeded themselves from last year. They were really beautiful for a while. Now they're dead. Now they're ready to go away. So we had some maintenance to do up here and we had to jump into the sago palm in order to cut it back because it was time for that too. So I'm going to show you some ring doorbell footage because I did not actually film on the day that we decided to do this or I decided to do this quite frankly. So we got the buggy out. We call it the buggy. I think it's, I mean, it's like a ATV or UTV or whatever. We call it the buggy. And um, I got Alan to hook up these bushes and just yank them out because they, they needed to go. We've been messing with these azalea bushes for the entire time we've lived here. They've always looked as raggedy as they look there. Um, and we finally realized why when we pulled them out is because there's about three layers of landscape fabric underneath them. So they couldn't penetrate into the actual 
deeper soil. They just, all the roots were straight on the surface. So it took hardly anything to pull them out. Um, so we, we figured that out quickly once we got digging. Then it was time to cut that back the sago palms, which really took me a lot of work. I put my long sleeve shirt on for that. And I'm showing Alan here um, the blood trails that are on the leaves of the sago palm. So they are very pokey and apparently speared something because there was blood within the leaves of that. So you see, we got those pulled out on that day. It took me a few days to get back to messing with this front area again because we just about died of heat stroke on the day that we tried to tackle all this and get it done um so what's left in there is basically like monkey grass that was kind of underneath that big sago palm and then we still have yet to do or we did a couple days later some more trimming on the bushes especially that purple one that's on the end there and we're going to add um, a big load of fresh mulch as well and this will all be beautified for another few months Last but not least, I thought I would show you a little bit of footage from Hurricane Francine the other day. So this came in, I believe it was Thursday of last week and Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember, but one of those days and I tried to set up the cameras so that I could do a little bit of time-lapse footage. Luckily for us here in Baton Rouge, we did not have damage this year. We had damage in Hurricane Ida a few years ago. This storm was not as strong as Hurricane Ida, thank goodness. And we did not have lots of trees down or anything but the storm we sort of were waiting for it to come in all day long so by the time the winds got really strong it was starting to get dark and you couldn't really see too much on the cameras but the biggest gust of wind that we had was around 40 miles an hour here so that was not too bad and honestly we fared really really well we had power out for a few days um, luckily we have a home generator so we don't suffer too much when we have the power out here either so thank goodness everything was a-okay here for us in Baton Rouge during Hurricane Francine and the chickens and turkeys and everybody else was just fine too so anyway um, thank you so much for watching today's video and again I wanted to thank Vijega, today's video sponsor I hope that you will check out their website you'll find something you love there I'm sure and use my discount code if you decide to order.